about God, I get emotional. <laughs> I just get emotional talking about God. When I'm with somebody who really, truly loves God on the level that I love Him and understand Him on the level that I love Him, I feel that way about Him. So, you know, most times we could talk about God and you could vibe with someone when they're really not there. So you just go through the motion for your own salvation. You explain to them about Islam and the way of Islam, how it is. Um, wholeheartedly and truthfully, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, which there's no compulsion, there's no hatred, it's just, it's insane how different um, religion, religions have different variations and we're supposedly be the same, under the same God, which is Allah, and it's just, um, it's, 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 it's a complex situation we deal with when we deal with religion. His salvation, his understanding, he enlightened me, you know what I mean? Before I became a Muslim, I've always I've known Muslims all my life, you know what I mean? But I never um, had any inclination of becoming a Muslim because I didn't think their conduct was, I thought it was all hypocritical. But then when you run into people, um, individuality, individuality allows people to act certain ways and certain people conduct themselves in other ways and certain people conduct themselves in ways that are different from that. And I was just saying, um, a Muslim is just your conduct. And when you conduct, con conduct yourself Islamically, and only God can judge you, basically. You know what I mean? Men judges men's action. God judges your heart. I like to believe so. I like to believe I'm a better individual now. You know what I mean? Every now and then I go, I go off the handle and I may curse someone out or be upset. Um, but you know, I, I keep my salvation with Allah. Um, I, I try, I get, I try to get on my prayer. Then I should pray more than I do. And um, instead of I should I pray like probably three to four times. I should pray the whole five times. Mm -hmm. And I just, um, I just try. You know what I mean? See, you know, it's interesting, Mike. You become conservative over the years. I heard you talking about welfare is a bad thing. Private schools may be a good thing. You know, we, you're concerned about the welfare of your kids. You're concerned about violence. Not that that's a conservative posture, but you've become in your older age, 31, soon to be, you become a guy who's become a fairly suspicious and sus suspect person about the world around you. You know, you have to because, um, you know, when you think about when people say, well, I want my kids to grow up like me, we're lucky, I'm lucky. My son may not be lucky to survive what I survived. My daughter may not be lucky to survive. I don't want them to be some radical nuts. You know, I don't want them to say, well, we're going to fight for this cause. I want them to say, yes, sir, no, sir, and just go to school. And I know people say, you weren't like that, but... You they, weren't like that. I know, but they may not be lucky <laughs> and be out there in the streets hustling. You know, I'm just so happy that they're in the situation financially, and they got a great... Listen, um, they got a, got a father that cares about them, and they got a mother who's bright and intelligent and knows all... Um, the proper way of taking care of children. And what did I have? I had a mother who was an alcoholic and I had a father who was a pimp, a hustler in the streets. You know what I mean? I don't know if that's going to make them a better person than I am, but hopefully from their situation they'll get a better life than I had. You used to tell me your, your, your dream was to be the champ and to be the greatest champ. Well, I'm, I'm, talking, I'm talking about big dreams, like after fighting, like after fighting over the hell with the world, it's live your life, raise your kids. But I don't got no big dream like I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to be somebody important and outrage. Nah, man. Me, become, me being champ or me being a fighter is just being one of the guys. You know, that's not nothing serious. People take more serious than it really is. Life is taken too serious. Life is sometimes, um, shoo. Um, over exaggerated, I think, sometimes. You told USA Today last week that the biggest mistake you've made in your life was to get involved in boxing in the first place. That's hard for me to believe. All the great things that have happened for you, I mean, there's been a lot of, a lot of bad things. More bad than good. But not because of the sport of boxing, not because of what you did in the ring. No, listen, boxing ex ex exposed me to other people in boxing exposed me. Um, the only reason that other people took pot shots at me because people in boxing did. When they saw people in boxing, um, the writers take pot shots, write books, try to get off and exploit me. And inadvertently, they felt that it was okay, they can do it too. So everybody just took shots at me. That's how come a guy like me, what, what chance do I have? I have no chance in this country. I can never have started a good life, a healthy life in this country. Because I'm, um, it's widespread that I'm just um, a bad apple. Do you have regret, more regrets than you have dreams? Yes. I mean, I'm just happy one fight at a time, you know what I mean? I'm not racing to grab no title, it's one fight at a time and establish my, my, my livelihood.
more so than just anything else. You know, I'm a human being. I've never, I've never been um, um, perceived as a human being. Never. I never always perceived as a freak, an animal, some young kid that could, that's the strongest guy in the world, or something like that. I've never been really perceived as an animal because I never broke down or cried or showed much emotion about anything that I endeavored. And so I've never really been um, really um, perceived as like a human. Because when people speak of me, they don't speak of me as somebody with feelings or emotions or anything. You got four kids, five? Four. Four kids. Four kids, including a brand new baby. Yeah. Four kids, brand new baby. What should they think of their daddy? That, um, That's important, what they think of. No one else, it's not important what anyone, it's important what your kids think, what your wife think. What should they think of you? I don't know, they should, um, I, they all have different, my, my wife is too different. I really don't understand, know my wife that will understand her. And I'm sure she doesn't understand me because I'm so wishy-washy sometimes. But I, and some people, um, that's their main objective, to sit down, to study their mate, and to, to know their every move for they can't. I don't really care. Either you're with me or you're not. What do your kids talk to you about? What do you huh? think? It's what do you love. Th it's all about love. It's all about kisses, love, taking them to Jeepers, and taking them to little um, restaurants, feeding them, helping them with homework. It's, it's, you're just the daddy simple. to them. Yeah, it's real simple. You would hope that they would someday get all the information and still admire you as their father. Because Listen, I don't know about all that stuff if they're going to admire me or anything. Um, but I know they're going to have the, the, um, the chance to be a good person. They're going to have all the opportunities. You know what I mean? So they're going to make a choice whether they're going to be a bum or a good person. They're going to have the resources. You don't feel you're in financial straits. You don't feel like. <laughs> <laughs> me? I'm That's asking. my biggest problem. I got too much money. I get to it, it comes too quick. That's my biggest problem. I wish I had money problems. Like, well, we hear um, all these rumors, oh, he's got to fight because he needs the $50 million to, and that the government's got listen, $30 million dollars on the houses. Listen, can I tell you something? How, many, how much, if I owe people $20 million, if how many times do I have to throw my right hand to get $20 million? The reality, how many times do I have to throw it? Are you saying that you're just a mercenary now for the money? I don't know. Because there, there was a time, Mike, where you fought because you loved it. You wanted the title. You did, the money was great. But it really wasn't the motivator. Well, I didn't have four kids and a wife. You know, I mean, I had those responsibilities then. So I could just fight when they have to fight, go grab a girl, and just come on, let's go to Bahamas for two weeks and just hang out. And then if I get tired, I say, well, you go back home and it costs money. You know, you can't do those. What's it like to go to a sheriff's office and to have to register as a sex offender? I don't know. It's just, um, it's just no. Does it demean? Did it feel demeaning no, to you? No, I have no. Um, I don't get embarrassed. I have no dignity in that perspective. Um, like when we, when I was there, right? Um, there's nothing but ladies. Like there's nothing but ladies in the sheriff's office. So the lady said, um, "Well, what did you get convicted for to be here?" Well, I said rape, and I said real loud. And my friend said, "No, no, 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 no." He said, um, "Sexual assault." And the lady started laughing. I'm not supposed to. That's rape. They said I raped somebody. You know what I mean? But um, after the all ladies came, hugged me, kissed me, I signed the autograph because um, anybody that's a sophisticated adult and they seen the situation that happened, they know that's bullshit. You know what I mean? But you didn't rape her. Listen, I, listen, we're not going to go. I'm not going to touch it too much, but it's just it's so much bullshit. Yeah, I raped her. Give me a break, okay? Remember Ragey Bowl, the movie? Yes. There's that scene with Jake LaMotta. I think it really did happen, but it was in the movie. Robert De Niro as Jake LaMotta starts banging his head against the wall. Why, 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 why? When he was I... in prison, right? Yeah. yeah. Did you ever feel that way? I'm too sophisticated to do that. You know, it's just, I'm no fucking brute. You know, it's just things happen, and I said, well, listen, I screwed up, this happened, and we deal with them. You know, I'm, Custom Auto taught me how to be. He was a strong man, I'm strong, and I'm mean. And there's nothing that could break my spirit from that perspective. Nothing's going to make me get on that. I'm never going to get on my knees to no one. I was around nine years old, and I was in a reform school in the Bronx. It's located in the Bronx, and it's called Spofford. And um, one day um, we went there and we saw a movie, and the movie was the greatest. I believe it was 77, 76, the movie appeared. And um, after the movie played, um, Muhammad Ali walked in, and I was just flabbergasted just to look at the champ. It was just, um, and after that day I said, wow, I'm going to be just like this man. You know what I mean? And I don't know, um, it's just he just gave me an inspiration to accomplish something, to have a goal. He just gave me a goal. And just 
to just label him as a boxer is just um, is a disjustice because